No, do not call me anymore. It's none of my business. How am I supposed to record a lecture for the students now? Feeling completely broken. Fuck. Where are my meds? <sighs> All right. Now we can go get the camera. It's locked. Oh, this place is starting to look like a garbage dump, rather than a storage room. Well, I hope I won't forget to press the record button this time. Let's move on straight to our deceased. I'm wondering how the new tripod is going to work. I've just frame it properly and... Oh, this should be fine. November 21st, 1991. Time, eight... Well, who do we have here today? The deceased is locally known as Old Toby, homeless and unfound on the outskirts of a parking lot near a gas station, where it mentioned the body was found. The deceased is locally known as Old Toby, found on the outskirts of a parking lot near a gas station, where he often begged. And now we can get oh, where are the damn gloves. Oh, must have left it in one of the drawers. Let's follow the procedure and prepare photo documentation. We must follow the top-down rule. Luckily, we don't have to take pictures of the clothes this time. We are only focusing on the body. Before we start searching for traces on the deceased's body, we need to take a basic photo that goes in the files. Before we start searching for traces on the deceased's body, we need to take a basic photo that goes in the files. Voila! Now we move on to the next step, trace search. We're going to need better zoom here. People affected by homelessness most often die from accidents, alcohol abuse. We're going to need better zoom here. We're going. We're going to need better. And that's perfect. Hmm. <clears throat> well. You don't have to stand close to be able to smell a strong... While taking the photos, some entries that could be potentially lethal caught my attention. Let's take a closer look using the magnifying glass. We'll get to making notes on the board.
There are frostbite marks all over the deceased's body, although they are most visible on the tips of his fingers. They can be recognized by the very specific color of this. However, the hair... By the look of his feet, I assume Toby must have worn uncomfortable and de- However... An old wound that hadn't healed properly. It must have been some kind of burn or other injury. Nevertheless, it has nothing to do with the potential cause of death. Hmm, that's something interesting. While making photographic, the appearance indicates we'll come back later to- What do we have here? We'll get to make At this point, that's all I can do based on all traces on the body of the deceased. The inside should tell me much more. Let's move back to the body. Now let's check the level of muscle. That's too low. That's too low. Then let go. The stronger the rigor mortis gets, the greater the resistance from the muscles will be. As you can see, the hand falls loose. The rigor mortis has already subsided. We can then assume that the time of death stated in the files is correct. Let's grab a scalpel. You can boldly cut with the scalpel. It won't hurt him no more. We always start from the neck and move down towards the symphysis pubis. The incision should be deep. Next, we separate the skin and prepare to remove the ribs. now. I don't need this tool now. After removing both cartilage accidents, including traffic accidents or falling down,
The pulmonary trunk and aorta seem to be in good condition. There are no pathological changes that have contributed to our Toby's death. Well, we can eliminate freezing as the cause of death. The deceased smoked like a chimney. Let's take a closer look. We see widespread black and tarry deposits caused by smoking cigarettes. Despite the tragic condition of the lungs, they are not the cause of death. Now we need to go grab the syringe. At first glance, the heart looks fine. Let's take the autopsy saw to cut through the skull to cleave it in two. Remember, the skull, not the saw. At this point, we need to test the level of blood alcohol. We move on to collecting blood from the heart. Five milliliters from the left ventricle should do it.
Now, we prick the bladder and draw about 10 milliliters of fluid. We also collect the fluid from the deceased to determine the level of alcohol concentration in the vitreous humor. Keep in mind that you have to set the right time and speed on both knobs before you the center. Ugh, damn it. If something goes to shit, it's all the way. That's probably the blown fuses again. Hold up. I must have had a flashlight somewhere. Open a clock out early today. What? what was that? Where did I go? Yeah, it's definitely the fuses. Right goes first, left next. Uh, where's that unbearable noise coming from? It's locked. That's strange. I'm pretty sure I closed the window. The homeless probably misses me already. Uh, 
It's locked. concentration. All right, let's see what we've got here. Well, everything is telling us that the BAC, blood alcohol concentration, is high. Hence the smell we're getting. Still, unfortunately. Now let's take a closer look at the stomach. As expected, the stomach has no major external damage. In this case, further inspection is no use. We must cut him open. I don't need this tool now. Anyway, we will start dissecting the brain from the occipital lobe. In this way, the brain's dura mater is slowly revealing itself. After the basic examination, we can see that the cerebral gyri in both brain hemispheres are symmetric and the bumps between them are clear. So far, so good. The hematoma seems to have had no effect on the organ we're examining. Let's check its transection. Moving on to the incision.
holding a knife with a long, narrow blade in your dominant hand, cut the cranial nerves on both sides, pulling the brain towards you. Fragment of the brain to the tray, and, literally and figuratively, go over it with a fine-tooth comb. Just as I initially suspected, we can rule the fatal accident out as well. We now come to the deceased's neck. Same as we did with the stomach. External inspection didn't tell us anything. Now the scalpel comes into play. While cutting a small organ, such as the trachea, we must perform a precise incision. To be able to cut with the very tip of the blade, we must hold the knife as if it was a stylus. Ladies and gentlemen, I think we've got it. Based on the report and preliminary documentation, it is safe to assume that the deceased passed out after consumption of alcohol and then fell asleep on his back. Then the gastric contents refluxed and flooded the airways, causing death. That's why we don't forget about the recovery position at dorm parties. And now it's all clear. The death was caused by suffocation. I don't need this tool now. I don't need this tool now.
I don't, I don't need this tool now.